One of the questions I get these days is, Victor, is AI going to replace me, take my job, eliminate my job? And if there are new jobs to be created, that's the second question, are there new jobs being created by AI? Where are those jobs? So what I want to do today is explore where are some of these opportunities that maybe you can look for. If you're a student in college right now, maybe you want to look at some of these career paths. If you are a person in corporate America with a career, maybe you want to start off-roading towards one of these sectors. I'm Victor Antonio. My background is in sales, but it's also in engineering. I started out in AI many years ago, and to see AI come to fruition is exciting. So let's get into this article that was written by a gentleman by the name of Ryan Dawes. It's titled, AI study, Sector Study, Record Growth Mass Serious Challenges. Now I'm gonna focus on the positive here. Uh, Ryan Dawes is a senior editor, and you'll see it here at Forge, Tech Forge Media. And this is a, and I love, by the way, I love studies because it's not hyperbole, it's not anecdotes, it's not personal opinion or stories. These are studies that were done. So here it is, a comprehensive study, read through the article here, a comprehensive AI sector study conducted by the Department of Science, Innovation Technology in collaboration with Perspective Economics, Ipso and Glass.ai, provides a detailed overview of the industry's current state and its future prospect. Now, I should highlight that this is a study done in the UK, but nonetheless, there's some interesting data in here. First, the study highlights the remarkable growth in the UK. Something to look at. 3,000 new active, over 3,000 active AI companies have generated 10.6 billion pounds in revenue and again, look at the employment. More than 50,000 people are employed in AI roles because of this new technology. So there is growth here. The question still is, where's the growth? I'll get to that. Uh, I, I, I thought, found this interesting. Uh, a company called Siebel. Mark Boo, CEO of Siebel, said, in the space that's been dominated by U.S. companies for too long, it's promising to see the government now stepping up to help support the U.K. AI sector on the global stage. Now, every time I hear about government helping out, I'm always like a little hesitant. I can see why government should step in to try to, I guess, sometimes be a catalyst and push the market, get it started, kick started. But every time you get government funding, it always comes with some strings and some restrictions and some regulations that might in the long run not benefit companies. Uh, it says, the study shows that AI activity is dispersed across various regions in the UK, and it talks about the different regions. But here's where we start getting some of the meat of it, investment and funding. Investment in the AI sector has been the key driver of growth in 2022. You can look at the numbers there. But also what's interesting is that, read this comment here. Major players like AWS, that's Amazon. Again, that's their warehouse, right? Their cloud service, right? AWS are locking AR startups into their ecosystem with offerings of like 500K cloud credits. Let's pause here. What this person is saying is that Amazon, is basically trying to lock in startups, right? In other words, we'll give you on AWS, our cloud service, we'll give you $500,000 worth of credits that you can use to build, fund, kick off your startup. And it says right here, ensuring that emerging companies start their joint, your journey reliant on their infrastructure, Amazon. This, is, this not only hinders competition and promotes vendor lock-in, but also risks stifling innovation across the broader UK AI ecosystem. Let's break that apart a little bit because that's a really interesting statement. So first of all, AWS is giving you basically $500,000 worth of credits if you qualify, right? For a startup company, that's a lot of money. That's getting like free funding, for half a million dollars. Remember, AWS has not only the cloud services, but also tools that you can use to build your platform out, which is basically a great way to kick off your enterprise software idea. Now, what the government is saying here is kind of interesting, that this type of approach, by the way, I think Amazon is brilliant in doing this, uh, this type of approach hinders competition. I don't know about that, because if more companies can get on the platform and start out with $500,000 worth of credit, why would that hinder competition? To me, that encourages, fosters competition, because the, the barrier to entry to jump in and start your own AI company now becomes more realizable because you got 500,000 worth of funding. And then it says, and it promotes vendor lock-in. Mm, I kind of see what they're saying is that if you start with Amazon, you'll probably want to continue with Amazon. And I get that, they'll probably use up their 500K, but after that, 
any company can take their business elsewhere. True. That if they do go elsewhere, they probably have to start over again or maybe not have all the tools and the capabilities. So there is some truth to that, but I don't call it lock-in. I would say it's more of a tendency to want to stay there. But here is where it gets interesting and the, really the point of this conversation, and that is addressing the bottlenecks. Addressing the bottlenecks means this is where they need resources. Now, let's go through this. This is really interesting. Now, my background is telecom. That's where I started on the technology side. So this really resonates with me. Let me read this out. Read this here. Despite the growth of, and investment, several bottlenecks must be addressed to fully harness the potential of AI. This is where it gets interesting. Infrastructure. Start there. The UK's digital technology infrastructure is less advanced than many other countries. In other words, their superhighway, so to speak, isn't up to par. And as the systems keep growing, they become more complex, more data, more bandwidth, broadband is needed. So more infrastructure is needed. Think of a highway system. You need more highway systems. The more, you know, uh, things like ChatGPT, Meta's Llama, all these other frontier models, large language models, begin to become incorporated into our daily lives. By that, I mean within a company. We're going to need more highways to move the data. This bottleneck includes inadequate data center infrastructure. Now, there's a hint there. So more data centers are being built, especially here in the U.S. That's a big business today. And all you have to do is ask yourself from a career perspective or let's say a jobs perspective is if somebody's building out a lot of data centers, what suppliers and manufacturers supply, let's say, the materials to that data center? For example, if you're building a data center, you're going to need servers, you're going to need infrastructure, you're going to need IT services, cybersecurity, so forth and so on. So the more infrastructure that is required, the more jobs are created to support that infrastructure. Commercial awareness. Many SMEs, they don't define it, but I'm assuming here it means you know small to medium-sized enterprises, lack familiarity with the digital technology. Almost 31% of SMEs have yet to adopt the cloud, and nearly half, 47%, do not currently use any AI tools or applications. Now, this is another great opportunity. So what you're starting to see is a lot of consulting companies, big ones, you know, the big names, go after this market because a lot of people, a lot of companies simply don't know where to start. So if you have some type of background in AI, cybersecurity, or anything related, then this presents an opportunity because many companies are simply confused. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to start, which is where you can come in. And last but not least here, skill shortages. Let me read this one. Two-fifths of business struggle to find staff with good digital skills. Pause there. If you're an educator, here's an opportunity. So we're going to need people to educate folks on how to use digital technology, not just AI and AI tools, but understand the digital technology, how to incorporate that, maybe use it within a marketing infrastructure or a sales department infrastructure. You get the idea. There is a rising need for workers with AI-specific skills, such as prompt engineering, which you've heard of, that will require retraining and upskilling opportunities. So as I go through this article, again, great article by Ryan Dawes, what you're starting to see is that as the system is being built out, what we're seeing is a linear, linear, I should say, an exponential growth in AI. To support AI, you're going to need an infrastructure. You're going to need tools, servers, GPUs, which is why NVIDIA is so popular, and also Intel at AMD. All these companies are growing because infrastructure is needed. The way to look at it is almost think about you just found a new area and there are no highways or roads. So what we have to do is we have to build new highways and new roads because what we currently have isn't sufficient if we use the highway system analogy. So this presents great opportunities for those who are looking for a new career. Or again, if you're in college, you're looking to basically go into a career. Let's start looking at how do we support infrastructure and what careers would support that. Anyway, I'll put a link to the article in the description below. Thank you for your time. This is Victor Antonio. Hope you enjoyed this.